Youth Committee and uh, here with Pat Rafferty to um, speak about uh, how Unite can move forward in a world that's rapidly changing and how the union uh, think is going to modernise. Well, <laughs> um, we certainly need to move with the times and you know we need to make sure that the union that we've um, built is, is still fit for purpose going forward. So, um, and things are changing so rapidly these days. Um, automation, for example, is, is one that's coming through, coming through a, a pace that is quite frightening. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it's difficult these days to get in a shop bar, you're getting ushered in your, you know, an automated till, or you get in a bank that you can't. Um, in fact, these days trying to find a bank to get in has become more and more <laughs> difficult because of online banking. So there's 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 a change in, in the kind of the fourth industrial revolution in terms of the, the automation. But I think there's also the change in the communication that we've got and how we need to communicate with our members as opposed to how we did historically. Um, and making sure that we keep pace with that. The, the digital age, the, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the you know, the WhatsApps, all these types of things that communication these days is just it's just instant. Folks say that um, the trade unions uh, are irrelevant now. How would you respond to that? Oh, I would um, aggressively defend okay. <laughs> and saying that that's, that's not the case. Okay. Um, and, and actually statistics can show you that where the unions are, are involved, um, then health and safety is, it becomes a safer working environment for our members in the workplace. And the terms and conditions become enhanced. People have a voice, they have a, a seat at a table. Um, and, and good companies, good, you know, blue chip companies, you'll find that most blue chip companies have recognition agreements with unions mm -hmm. because they see the value of the union. You know, the, the union can bring a lot to, to an employer um, and a lot to good employers. A lot of the, the kind of bad news that you see there that the right wing media <laughs> want to portray as unions are bad, you know, union barns, you know, these people, um, they're, they're bad things and it's all about strikes and, mm. you know, all these, this type of thing. But that's actually not the case. Mm. Um, a lot of the work that unions do, they work along with the employers to ensure that, you know, people are gainfully employed, that the, the, the work's there for years to come. Um, and people are treated with dignity and respect. We try and break down any inequalities that's there. And we make it a safe working environment for people to work in. Now, that's not things that you would, mm. you would disagree on. Mm. You know, it tends to be disagreeing about the level of pay that you want to <laughs> <laughs> So obviously, like, as a sort of younger person, you know, I've not been in many, I've been in many workplaces because of the reality of precarious work. But I've not been in many workplaces where I go in and I've been introduced to the trade union rep. Um, it's not a sort of thing that me, maybe my friends will join and things like that. So in the past, maybe all your family joined the trade union or your parents had joined the trade union. And I don't think that's maybe the case for a lot of sort of my generation. So how do you, how do you um, combat that issue as well of, of un ununionised um, workplaces, particularly for younger workers? That's a good question because the, we'll see near the years, um, you know, particularly go back to, you go back to the 70s and then come right through mm -hmm. the 80s to where we are today, mm -hmm. um, where we had you know, strong collective bargaining was taking place across all sectors. Um, and pretty much any workplace you were in, there was strong union representation there. Um, and we've seen it, that deteriorate through basically political attacks. Um, Thatcher in the 80s when, you know, mm -hmm. had to go to minors and um, we've seen the, you know, the, the whopping disputes, these types of things. It was clearly, you know, attacks and trying to take away that collective um, power or collective voice that trade unions had. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole political agenda that that unions need to be involved in it. And a lot of times you, you'll get, sometimes your members will be saying, well, well, why are you involved with the Labour Party or why are you involved with these politics? And, you know, um, but just about everything we do in life mm -hmm. has got a political end to it. You know? So when that alarm clock rings in the morning and you're up, mm -hmm. you're, you're head after a pillar till you go back again you're, you know, to your bed at night, 
everything that you've done that day has got a, a political end to it. Mm. And if you're going to make a change that makes you know, um, a difference in the workplaces, and particularly the ones that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. the precarious working practices, we need to get um, political parties on our side mm -hmm. that changes the law that, that, that negates us for doing that this, this mm -hmm. current time. Um, the zero hours contracts, um, it's just absolutely ridiculous in so this day and age of the zero hours contracts. So do you think like the sort of political uh, climate and like sort of austerity agenda is making feel making people feel a bit more sort of like an individualistic? It's all about sort of my job and my education and and there's a loss of sort of collectivism within our society. Well, that's exactly what um, the big corporate organisations and Tory parties want. They want that individualism as opposed to that collectivism that, that we're all about. So. It's how we um, counter it and how we break that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel um, more optimistic these days with, with I see the Labour Leader, the Leader Party itself mm -hmm. and Jeremy Corbyn and now in Scotland when I've got um, uh, Richard Leonard mm -hmm. who have clearly got a progressive you know, outlook mm -hmm. to what they would see the party being and what they would want the changes mm -hmm. to be made and, and for people to get that voice and get that collectivism. And we've seen over the years that the inequality that's grown because of that individualism, you know, where the rich get richer um, and the poor get poorer. And they're queuing up in food banks and thousands of people are queuing up in food banks. Well, there's others cruising about in 200 million pound yachts because they could never spend the money that they earn, could never spend it. Um, and, and that's wrong. So and we need to you know, be getting the message out there to, to, to people in general, but particularly the members of the, what's the type of society you want to live in? Mm -hmm. Do you want to live in that, that type of society? Because if you do, well, carry on as, as you are, but if you don't, then you need to get politi political, you need to get involved politically, you need to make the changes at that level that helps us make the changes at workplace levels. Mm -hmm. So for people who might be in um, sort of workplaces where you know, they think their pay is fine, they think the conditions are fine, um, they don't see a sort of reason, if you like, to join a union. What would you say to that if they think that they, they think that their workplace is pretty good, they're quite satisfied with their, their sort of working conditions? What is, the, what, what is the, the union doing for people like that? Why would they want to join a union? Why should they? The reason why people have got um, good holiday entitlements and minimum wages and all these types of things is because of the work that unions have done historically to in order to, to get you there. Um, I mean, my message to, to, to people who, who think they really need a union, mm -hmm. then it's a wee bit like, I'm not going to insure my house today, mm -hmm. um, and then next week, you know, lo and behold, there's a fire in the loft and then it all starts to collapse all around about you. Um, you need that... Um, you know, you need a union there to ensure that the terms and conditions that you've got mm -hmm. remains there and, and that you're always trying to build mm -hmm. on that and you don't see them declining. And if you don't have that strong collective voice, then mark my words, mm -hmm. mark my words, the, world, the attack will come at some point in time mm -hmm. to bring the, the, the terms and conditions down. What do you think then is, um, what do you see as uh, the approach to make sure that, that young people like yourself, become active as, as you have, um, and remain active and, and starts to, to build and grow within the union? Well, I suppose I see the union not just as sort of a sort of place that's going to go in and fight for better conditions and pay. Like, it, it is a sort of, for me, a platform of education, um, and I think the diversity in our union is powerful. Um, like, the, the experience, the young, the you know, people of all sort of backgrounds um, come together is quite powerful and I think the opportunities within our unions may be something that maybe a lot of younger people take for granted, that like the structures that we have, that people have fought for, is something that, um, you know, I do love about our union, that you've got the sort of different committees and, uh, and different things to get involved in, so it's not just about um, your own workplace, it's about learning about other sort of workplaces and learning about the political system and um, I think it is that full sort of 
unity, not just in your workplace, but also like in your life as well. Um, and I think that's something that's that's pretty powerful. Um, and I do think there is a sort of lost um, sense of collectivism in society in general. And I think being part of the union makes you feel a bit more sort of connected. A bigger family. I, 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 I think it is. And I, like I said, I don't think it's just a place for me um, where it is about helping you in your workplace. It's actually about sort of helping you develop in your life uh, as well. And I think, you know, I've come through the union, I'm only 20 and a half. Had great opportunities, I've been to Cuba, I've, you know, developed politically as well and, and myself. And I think that's something that, you know, I'd want any person to do, not just like a young person. I think there's, um, young people can help sort of older people within the union to, to modernise into technology and, and learn about the realities of that everything is, is moving to sort of online and digital. Um, and also, I think there's a lot more experienced people who will tell us that, you know, this is not the way that workplace used to be in the past and, and things like that. So I think it is a great learning uh, platform as well. Do you think there's a, there's a lack within the education system itself about unions and what unions stand for? The, mm -hmm. Through the school curriculums, for example, there's not enough... Definitely, I don't think there's way. any, you know, you learn at school, you know, this is what a CV is, mm -hmm. or you have to go on your one week work experience, but never do they prepare you before you go on that work experience about, you know, what is your rights at work, what pay should you be getting, um, there's definitely a full sort of lack of learning about your political and, and trade union rights in school, um, I don't know why, um, but it is so CV sort of driven, um, rather than actually preparing us to to fight for better wages is almost an acceptance um, and nobody, I mean the wage, the wage rates annoy me, like how at 16 you could be paid less than somebody who's 25 for working in the same we, uh, job and doing the same hours, um, but all that sort of stuff, there's no sort of education in school um, about sort of trade union rights. It's sad that because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you're sitting in here in the early south and you, know, you look at the back here and Jimmy Reid and Jimmy Early and in the 70s with the upper class shipbuilding mm -hmm. um, occupation and the working that if it wasn't for the fact that that took place back then, mm -hmm. there would be no shipbuilding mm -hmm. in the Clyde right now. Mm -hmm. There would be no apprentices in the Clyde right now. And that piece of history about what trade unionism is and what it stands mm -hmm. for seems to be lost in, in the whole, you know, as you said, in the, the education system. So mm -hmm. trade unions is not just about being at a strike. Mm -hmm. um, it's far, far much better than wider than that. What, what do you feel then is, is that we could be doing better um, that we're not doing currently in this? Obviously, like, the, the way you approach, um, particularly younger workers, I think, um, you know, you need to, you need, to, you can't be what you can't see. Like, I always say that if you don't see people like you within the trade union movement, then why would you want to join that? So, um, like, obviously you need to engage um, with, or, like, particularly younger people by actually, you know, being at their workplaces and educate them more about, I think there's still this perception that, you know, trade unions are just there to cause trouble in the workplace or they're on strike, but it's actually about, it, it's so much more than that and I think social media is powerful. Um, you know, like, being on Instagram and putting videos out, like, I think we we'll live in a world where people are, are fast paced constant all the time they don't have time to sit and read a 500 mm -hmm. word article about what the trade changing movement is like they want sort of snappy um headlines and uh, campaigns and things that relate to them i think we do live in a world where people are like well what's that going to do for me and people want to feel like um if they're going to join they're going to get something back or it relates to them so i think it is about you know stuff that does relate to them like i know uh, we've done like we're doing a lot more around like sort of mental health and I think that's some something that everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, because it is in in the workplace, out with the workplace, it relates to you whether you're old, young, you know, whatever. Um and uh, things like things like that people sort of hook into. Um so it is, yeah, I think it is just finding new ways about how we are engaging with people and I think social media is obviously a huge platform. It's where, where people are. I think people these days, because um, you can see the decline in the, the kind of the media side of things, mm -hmm. with it, particularly with the press and mm -hmm. 
I don't think there's many people buys a newspaper these days, do they? They, no. they, 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 they just go on the phone Aye. and uh -huh. have a look and, you know, and, and then, as you say, because I think even our website, and the, our website's all getting redeveloped and we're going to be getting our own website back again in Scotland, so it's interesting yeah. to listen to us because we need to get that website. But even on the website, like, a section, you know, dedicated for young workers as well, I think would be, yeah. would be, um, would be useful. Um, the websites, because I, I think some of the mistakes were made in the past with websites is if we load it up and load it up and load it up with big sheets of, you know, documents about this and then, mm. as you said, you know, people open it up and it's 40 pages mm. long and they just don't need it. Mm. Whereas the, the short um, messages and the short mm -hmm. video Snappy clips, um, that captures people's atten mm -hmm. attention and it resonates to, to what is actually happening to them within their own workplace or mm -hmm. within their own communities. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way to be, to be trying to, to communicate mm -hmm. with, with our members and people who mm -hmm. hopefully want to come and join the training yeah. room. I think as well, like, there's a danger um, within the sort of trade union and sort of labour movement where people, you're just maybe speaking to the same group of people and it's maybe like the same group of people at the same events and like I think that's problematic when you're maybe all thinking the same but actually you've got this wider sort of membership, you've got this wider uh, society that doesn't actually think like that or is not engaged so I think you know there's a problem as well of not just getting people signed up but actually getting people sort of active as well not just the same faces at the same sort of events and conferences and, and thinking about that as well. Um, so actually selling the union not as just something about, you know, it's just about fighting for having representation if something goes wrong in the workplace, but actually, you know what, this is actually, this is a big family and this is a big platform of education and this is about not just fighting for your rights at work, but fighting for a, a better society. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a movement, yeah.